Hey there, I'm Clark. Welcome back to Daddy Guy's Kitchen. It is a really cold, dreary, and to be totally frank, nasty Sunday evening here in New England. We're smack in the middle of Hanukkah. Thanksgiving smacked us upside the face. We were off on the West Coast traveling. We're back. We're starting to unbury a little bit, and I have to say that I'm really unhappy with the fact that my family hasn't taken a moment this weekend to really properly celebrate Hanukkah. It got so swept up in the mix with Thanksgiving this year, no one's had a chance to really remember the miracle of miracles that happened um, in the temple when the light stayed on for eight nights when there was only enough oil for just a, not even half that long. It was crazy how it happened. And uh, we want to celebrate our own Hanukkah miracle here this evening. It's our first Hanukkah with our son Vaughn. And it's also a miracle that totally unplanned for this type of cooking adventure went into the pantry and I found just enough stuff around here that I can pull together a really wonderful fast and furious impromptu Hanukkah feast. Um, we're going to have some delicious homemade latkes and also some homemade matzo ball soup and I'll show you how I managed to pull off truly homemade matzo ball soup despite the fact that there's no, uh, there's no chickens running around here this evening. So what's really behind our, uh, our miracle of ingredients here, having enough to pull this meal together despite the fact that we really had not prepared for this at all, are these great potatoes that would have been baked potatoes if they'd lasted much longer. The kind of thing I like to keep around for easy, quick, healthy, and delicious weekday uh, dinners. And now I'm just getting the skins off of one onion. But the real star of me being able to pull this meal together, we're not reinventing the wheel from a culinary standpoint, but what's really going to make it work for me here is my food processor, because I literally have my son laying right here. Who knows when he might freak out. Um, some of the hardest work that goes into cooking is just the breaking down of lots of vegetables, and a food processor can really help you get there quickly. As you're about to see, I've got her all set up here with my shredder attachment, and I'm just going to do something that I really enjoy in my kitchen, which is shred some stuff. Shredding. And we're not going to stop there. While we have a chance, we're just going to go ahead and do the same thing with our onion. So now here's what you're really watching for, folks. Let's face facts. Making latkes isn't that counterintuitive. We're just frying up some potato patties, really. But what makes them so delicious is doing it the right way. And for potatoes, that means getting out all the fluid because you want your latke to brown up really nicely. And if there's a lot of water in the mix still, they're going to steam, not brown. So here's what we have to do. It's a crazy step, but it's just what you have to do. If you're not doing this, you're not making latkes in my book. So here's what we do. We take that wonderful mixture that we just pulled out of our food processor. And I'm just laying this potato and onion mixture out on, right onto a dish towel. I'm just going to go jelly roll style here, right up with my dish towel, freshly washed, of course. And I'm going to take this over to my sink, and I'm going to show you how we get, see it dripping. So now we've got our sort of drying knapsack here full of potato shreds and onion shreds. I'm just going to get it right into a bowl, and you can really tell the difference. Like these are really light and fluffy now, not like way down with water. And I can tell you, this is you know a pretty heavy kitchen towel now. It had a lot of fluid in there, so I think our effort was worthwhile. Before I forget, I'm going to salt and pepper my potato. Just going to crack. I'm not quite sure how many eggs, so I'm going to start with one. Use my hand to break up that yolk and just spread this all throughout. You want to feel like the egg is bringing the potato together, creating essentially a batter, but you don't want it to feel like it's a runny, wet, messy batter. You want this to be relatively dry still. And I don't think one egg is going to cut it for us in that department. So a couple secrets coming out here, and this is top of my head stuff, but I'm just always thinking, on an evening like this when we're not thinking about cutting calories, high fiber, nutrient dense, we're thinking more about comfort and celebrating an event the way it's meant to be celebrated, I start thinking what can we do to make it a little bit greater. I'm going to have a little truffle oil here. I typically would not put truffle oil in anything before it was cooked, but this just feels kind of right. I'm sure we'll add a little bit more at the end, so bear with me. And a little bit of parmigiano reggiano, which I will just Again, we'll, we'll add more at the end, but I already have a non-non-stick 
stainless steel frying pan up to a pretty aggressive high heat. I'm going to get it all the way up to high now. Just adding a little butter to my frying pan. This is not only going to give more rich flavor to the lakas while they're cooking, it's also going to keep the cooking temperature a little bit lower, which is the balance. You get it too low, it's not going to brown up the way you want it to, um, but if it's too hot, it's going to burn. So I think the butter is sort of a moderator to help keep things within normal range in your laka pan. And I think people forget sometimes that the fastest way to cool down a, a pan that's too hot is to put some food in it. So why not take advantage of the heat we've built? And we're just taking nice glop-sized uh, handfuls, fingers full of laka. We're going to begin laying these down. So now that we flip these lakas about uh, two minutes in, ensuring a great golden brown crust on both sides, we're just going to pop each batch into our toaster oven, which I have set to 325 degrees. And we're just going to let each batch hang out in here, continue cooking, stay nice and warm, while we get each next batch of latke into the pan. So now for our, I can't even believe I'm making it myself, this homemade, homemade matzo ball soup. Um, like any good, not quite Jewish, but pretty Jewish boy, I happen to have a little container of chicken fat in my fridge. Now, you may or may not have this at home, and don't let it bother you either way, because you can easily use a little olive oil here, vegetable oil, any oil you like. But because I'm here, and because it's Hanukkah, and because I happen to have this beautiful chicken fat from a recipe long ago, I'm going to go ahead and just get that melting down. And so now, once again, back to our hero of the evening, this great food processor I have here. I'm just going to go back to my shred attachment and shred onion. Those onion stalks out of there. And then I've got a carrot peeled and a stalk of celery sort of trimmed down and diced and uh, chopped down. So now here's what makes this matzo ball soup totally unique to Daddy Guy's Kitchen. We have our chicken fat or maybe olive oil rendering up on the stove. It's nice and hot. We're just going to take a fistful of this carrot, celery, and onion mixture that we shredded up in our food processor. We're going to give it a hard squeeze to get as much fluid out as possible. And now we're just going to toss this fistful right into our pan. I'm so lucky to have a super special chicken broth that I've been holding on to for like six months. I got this out at a specialty food shop in Rhode Island called Persimmon Provisions. It's actually owned by a former client of mine, um, Chef Shem Spiedel and his wife Lisa. Great folks. And you know, when you're out shopping in the world, things like this homemade chicken stock, which you always need but never have the 20 hours that I'm sure Chance put into this, buy things like this. Stock your freezer so you always have them. You can easily use a store-bought carton of chicken broth here. That's not the point. That would be delicious too. And I'm going to go ahead and get this into my soup pot and bring this up to a nice simmer. I'm sure there's some amazing artisan answer to matzo balls that I'm not aware of yet. And I look forward to finding it one day. But for right now, the traditional old stuff works just fine. And again, the miracle of tonight's Hanukkah celebration, I happen to have it in my pantry, so we're good to go. So I'm just going to follow the manufacturer's instructions for two eggs, two tablespoons of vegetable oil. Gonna grab a fork and whisk these together really fast. And I'm just going to keep stirring while I whisk in my matzo ball mixture. So now I've brought my eggs and my vegetable oil and my matzo ball mix together. I'm just going to stick this in the fridge now for 10 minutes. So we have our matzo ball mix out of the fridge. I may have made it a little bit shy of 10 minutes, but I think they're going to be okay. And I'm just rolling two evenly sized matzo balls with the batter. I'm just going to get these guys right into my soup. The matzo balls take 20 minutes to cook once they're in the soup, so I'm going to set my timer, and when we hear the ding, it means we're ready to eat. New England. 
So we're all here together in Daddy Guy's Kitchen to kick off our impromptu Hanukkah celebration. We have our wonder of wonder, miracle of miracles, my little guy, our little schmoo here. Monster. We have our latkes piping hot out of Look the at oven. Look those! Whoa! And we have our matzo ball soup. Oh my goodness! Now listen, I don't know what to tell you about this matzo ball, but this is definitely wow. a Daddy Guy sized that. matzo That's ball. Huge. Make your smaller That's if you really want, something. but as for us tonight, we're going for the glory. Happy Hanukkah! Happy Hanukkah! Season's greetings to you all. Um, there's still two nights of Hanukkah left after you see this, hopefully tomorrow, so it's not too late. It didn't take much to pull together a wonderful reminder of the Hanukkah miracle of this season. A wonderful last minute Hanukkah celebration. I love you. Mwah. I love you. Mwah. Happy Hanukkah to you all. Happy Hanukkah.